extremely encouraging to see my management strategy come full circle. So I just wanted to show you what we're doing on our pasture here. This is one of the fields that we had sown down to uh, a pasture blend with a pollinator mix in it. So in here, uh, you can see that we mob grazed this one paddock. And you can't see anything but broken down grass. It pretty much stripped everything down. And the thing I want to show you is these are my clover plants. Completely chewed right up. Some eaten right down. Others long stem is left. So within the grass pasture blend I included a pollinator mix, which uh, included a bunch of random uh, perennial and biennial plants throughout the pasture. But being a beekeeper like myself, I sprinkled in some white and yellow sweet clover. Those plants are gold mine to beekeepers. And the idea is the plant will grow and provide me with that abundance of flowers which gives me the nectar and the pollen. Then as we rotate the cattle through this pasture, the cattle will effectively come in, they'll eat the grass, they'll choose, a, they'll eat the grass every time, right down to the ground as you can see. And then they'll come to the clovers. And they'll basically this, you know, suck the flowers and the leaves off the clover stems. Some of the clover, it's not as woody, maybe a little, a little more immature, will eat right down to the ground. The older clovers that have got a little bit ahead, they'll be that stocky stem, kind of like that. It looks a little bit ragged. But I'm going to show you exactly what happens after we take the cattle out of this pasture and after we get a bit of a rain. So here's a paddock that we rotated the cattle through three weeks ago. And they, we mob grazed it and this paddock looked basically the same as that last paddock I just showed you. They completely ate down the grass, stripped down the clover. And with a little bit of rain, as you can see, and without cattle actually walking this paddock, you can see the grass is rejuvenated along with the clover. So I have a rejuvenated nectar and pollen flow right across this field again. All that old clover, the old growth, it rejuvenated nice little flowers right across this field, which is providing my bees with nectar and pollen. So this is a paddock that the cattle just were introduced into about three days ago. And as you can see, the grass has kind of got ahead of them a little bit. They're tramping down lots of grass, which they will lick off the ground. So we're going to mob, we're mob grazing them in this paddock right now. This will hold them for a little while. And as you can see the clover, we have white sweet clover here. And you can see them eating the flowers and the leaves off these clover plants. So it's a tasty little treat for the cattle. Highly nutritious. That kind of diversifies up their food source within this, uh, within this pasture. So on the other side of this fence is a paddock that we have not grazed yet this season. They will likely be brought into this after this paddock we're in right now is grazed down. That'll be the next place they go. So we have staged grass for them. As you can see, the clover within the field there is in near near end of bloom right now. Probably has another week and a half left. So my bees are in there right now. They're gathering the nutrition and uh, all the nectar they need from all that flowering plant. And as the cattle get rotated into that paddock, uh, the cattle will graze down that the grass It'll chew down the clover and it'll provide yet another stage of that rejuvenated clover growth for my bees.
as we're farming our lands and we're finding that uh, we're not making mistakes anymore. We're farming our lands so clean, uh, so exact, so precise, so very efficient that we're losing the diversity across the landscape. So as beekeepers, we're finding that our hives are um, lacking that natural diversity that we need to be able to sustain our hives, to be able to sustain their growth and maintain them throughout the entire season. So a little bit of management like this within our pastures by rotational grazing our animals through the paddocks and by providing just a little bit of clover um, or other legumes. As we rotate the cattle through our paddocks, we are basically staging the flowering growth right through the season. And we can continue that on almost indefinitely as long as we get the rain and until it gets cold in the fall. So I'm not necessarily looking to provide the flowers for honey crop because the honey crop is out in the field. That is, that's where we're targeting. That's where we gather the, just the, the abundance of nectar to fill these boxes. What we're doing here in our pasture paddocks is just providing a little bit of diversity just to help maintain and sustain my bees throughout the entire season. This has been my whole message, my whole narrative um, as beekeepers we need to work in complement with agriculture. We need to be able to adjust our beekeeping management practices as farming practices evolve. We can't change the way farmers are gonna farm. They're adopting technology that is absolutely brilliant and is keeping them in business. We have to be able to find ways to be able to evolve as the grain farmer evolves. And ways of doing that isn't focusing on what the farmer's doing in the field, I feel we have the opportunity to be able to focus around the edges, in the ditches, throughout the pastures like this, just providing that little bit of the natural world to be able to provide the nutrition to help sustain our bees and growth and development through the entire season. We can't, with our supplements, we can't replace pollen. Without pollen, the bees do not live, period. We can't replace that. The bees need those essentials, those lacking essentials we can't replace, we can't replicate that I, I think of it as the spirit, you know. We need that spirit to come in, something that we can't replace, and we just need a little bit of that. And then after we get whatever that essential, whatever that spirit is coming in on that pollen, we then we can complement it with our supplement. And that's where our supplemental management program really shines, is if we have a little bit of that pollen out there, we have a little bit of that coming into our hives, we can then fill in the blanks and really bulk up their, their diet with all the supplement we can provide them. So a little bit of pollen and a lot of supplement and these hives absolutely thrive, but we can't do it without the pollen. So we have to be able to focus on uh, strategies to promote that natural pollen coming into our hives, be it in the pastures, be it in promoting better ditch management, focusing around the edges, muskegs, you know, tree lines, just anywhere where we can promote natural growth to provide our bees with that natural pollen is what we have to do as beekeepers to be able to allow us to manage our hives and keep pace with the rest of the agriculture. So that's what I've been all on all about. This is the kind of work I've been doing recently, just trying to develop that strategy. We have a long road ahead of us and just as beekeepers, we need to realize that we can't fight the progression and, you know, the changes that are going on in agriculture right now. We have to focus on the areas that are very important and we need to promote that. And we need to work and complement with everybody else. And we need them to understand how important our livelihood is to us too. We complement everything else within agriculture, within the natural world. We just need a little bit of help from society to focus on these essential issues just to be able to help us do a better job of managing our hives. So I'm just checking one of the yards, what we're gonna pull back tomorrow. And I'm just checking the boxes are actually ready. But it's near the end of the day and the guys are busy in the honey house. I'm not going to redirect the day right now. So we'll wait. We'll give them another night. We'll pick them up tomorrow. 
here's just a little pocket when I'm constantly on a boat. This is, Carrie tells me it's Joe Pieweed, but it's a nectar producer. It has some pollen in there. You can see there's some, some insects feasting on it right now, including bees. Just one more plant providing one more bit of diversity to complement the nutrition of all the pollinators, the bees, native pollinators, all types of insects. Just one more thing. Tucked away in the corner. This is kind of a little like a wet spot. Here's some goldenrod peeking through. This little corner here is kind of like just a little wet spot in the corner of the field on the edge of a run. Not really worth anything to anybody except for a beekeeper like me. I'm looking at all these, not only is it providing my hive shelter, but it's providing just a trace, just a little bit of nutrition to my hives right since spring. You'll see all the willow trees in there, the poplar, all their types of shrubs. They bloomed all spring, April into May, had some June flow. We have some flowers going on here, clover, like I say, that Joe Pieweed. We're gonna have goldenrod going. There's plants in here I don't even know the name of. And this is just a little corner, just on the edge of all this field back here. As you can see, this is a late sowed canola field. They had to sow it late because the bugs ate it off, which is benefiting my bees tremendously. As is this. This is what helps maintain and grow my hives. That is what I capitalize on. That's what I make my money on. Without one, I can't utilize the other. Like I can grow all my hives I want with all the abundance of little pockets of the natural world. But without agriculture, I'm not bringing in any revenue. Like look at these boxes, they're right full of honey. <clears throat> this is where I make my crop. This is my revenue source. <clears throat> this is where I pay my bills. This is what maintains my livelihood. It's off of agriculture. I sustain my hives on little pockets of the natural world like this. This is what keeps me in business.